Hi, welcome back. I'm Evangelist Charlotte Lumpkins, and this is Shout It Out to the Rooftops Ministry. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to join me this afternoon for a little time of study with the Word of God. Maybe you had your study already. That's good. Leave me a comment if that is something that you did. I'd love to hear from you how your study time went. <clears throat> Thank you for joining me in this study time. It might be different from your topic, or you might be following up on one of my videos, and you're going to finish studying yourself. And I think that's what you do. Don't take my word for it. Mm -mm -mm. You go ahead and read the word of God for yourself. I'm doing a topic called idols. Idols, idols, idols. Where are they? Don't make any graven images. The Lord said not to do that. And then when we make those graven images, we end up worshiping them. <clears throat> You ever have a um, something that you're copying from a document? What do you do? You put it on a machine and you run it off and here it comes. It looks just like the thing that they copied. Now they have 3D printers. They just print it, put it in there, press those buttons, and the thing comes out looking just like the thing that we want to copy. Well, those are images. Understand, if you can taste it, touch it, see it, or feel it, that's an image. <laughs> those are the things that get in our hearts. Yes, they do, and they clutter our soul. They clutter our spirit with these images, with these fantasies, with this imagination of who God is and what he wants. We have this imagination in our minds and the enemy gets in our imagination. Like he told Eve, you know what, Eve, you won't surely die. He wanted her to imagine a life like God. He wanted her to imagine the possibilities of her having knowledge and wisdom forever. He wanted her to imagine that she could possess that. She was made out of clay. She was made out of Adam's rib. Come on. What kind of pride was he going for? Beloved, stay with me. We're going to talk about this. Thank you for joining me. I'm Evangelist Charlotte Lumpkins, and I'm doing a series called Freedom in Christ in the Kingdom of Heaven. And we are talking about idling with idols. And I hope that this is a wake-up call for your spirit, man, because we're talking about the Kingdom of Heaven. If you got any idols in your heart, those things are blocking you from knowing the real living God. Pray with me and stay. I won't be before you long. Thank you for joining me today. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, bless every listener and meet every need. God help us. Open our eyes that we may see all that you really have for this. Not our imagination, God. Not what somebody said you have. But open our eyes that we may see the living God. That we may see Jesus and what he has done. That we may see our salvation coming in the name of Jesus, what you actually have for us, God, and it is good, your kingdom. It's your good pleasure, the Bible says, to give us the kingdom. Oh, Father, dwell with us now. Teach us as we need to learn the truth about you day by day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, the scripture says, I have not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the mind of man the things that God had prepared for those who love him. Don't use your imagination. You don't have to. He's going to show you. He said, you haven't seen it. Your mind's eye couldn't think and in, 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 in project all that God has for us, for those who love him. Beloved, stay with me. We're going to deal with a difficult topic <clears throat> because it's personal. I have my own personal issues with things that I have modeled in my life, with people that I have made um, idols out of, with situations that I wished I could have been like, with people that I said, wow, if I could only be like them, I need to study under them. I need to become more and more like them. Wow, if I could only get that into me, boy, I would be a better person. Nope. Those are images. <clears throat> Those are graven images. We want to apply ourselves to something. We want to copy ourselves. <laughs> I want to be a copy of her. <laughs> She's nice. I want to be a copy of that man that's very financially successful. I want to emulate him so much that I want to be like that person. And beloved, those are images. And if you have any of that in your soul, then anything than being like Jesus, oh my God, listen, if you don't want to be like him, then everything else that you're copying is false. It's a false God and it's a false desire. And beloved, it hinders you knowing the real living God. A little review. We are talking about what this means to me. We said thou shalt not have any graven images. God said don't create none, don't come none. And then he also says have no other gods before me. We read again thou shalt not covet what a neighbor has. Okay. 
Don't make go around making copies of yourself. Don't go around making copies of your neighbor. The neighbor got it. You got to have it. You're copying down. That's right. Don't go copying the people at the office. Well, they're coming in and they're not celebrating and, and you have to be all strict and, and, and can't enjoy the day of the Lord. Don't be copying all them sullen faces because it's Monday. You got the joy of the Lord in you. You celebrate Christ. You say, thank God I'm sipping my coffee. It's going to be a great day. And they're looking at you. Hmm. Why are you even happy? It's cold outside. <laughs> I know. Listen, come on. And then we said the things that we end up making images out of patriotism. We make images out of our culture. We make images out of our flag. We make images out of cultural ideas that this is who we are and we have to keep this going. The tradition of my family has been here since the beginning. My family put this land together. My family told me that we, oh my goodness, come on, come on. Those are the things are used with the passing. Your family is not here anymore. Those old ideas and traditions, they're not even here anymore. But some people are worshiping those ideas. They worship that culture that their generations gave them. They worship the fact that they have this land and whatever they did on it. <clears throat> they worship that ideal and they want everybody to fall in line with them. Those are graven images that people have in their hearts that keep people separated, that keep the love of God from flowing from person to person by those graven, graven images. All right, the next one, <clears throat> Satan appeals to our ears. He appealed to um, Eve. He appealed to her intellect. He appealed to what she saw. He appealed to her desire. The enemy always puts in to appeal to your emotions. He appealed to what you see, taste, touch, see, or feel it. If somebody else has it, that's covered in it. And then you got to have it too. And he appeals to that. Well, you're being left out. Satan told Eve, he's keeping something from you. The serpent told Eve, the neighbor is looking good. And, and you, she's all, look, you missing out. You ain't in with the in crowd. You're not walking on high ground with us. You got to come up here. You got to step up in your society. You got to come up here and be like us. You got to gain, have wealth and possessions like us. <laughs> or you're going to be a, 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 a nobody like them down there. <laughs> Images. It's all about the image. And beloved. The serpent had an image in the kingdom of heaven. He was blessed. He was high-minded. He had a spot, spot. He had a glorious image in the heavens. But then he sinned because he wanted his image to be above God. And thus he was thrown down to walk now amongst the dust of the earth as a serpent. Beloved, watch those images that you want to emulate and think about what's behind it. If it's not to be like Jesus, oh, Lord have mercy, then it's an idol. It's an idol. Let's go. Come with me. We're going to talk about um, fleeing idolatry, fleeing that image, erasing it from your mind, get it out of your head because it's taken the place of you being able to see and worship the living God. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to sidetrack a little bit. Let's go to Ezekiel as I study my notes. I talked about, I shared my testimony about what my mom would say when I wanted to do something. My dad was very seldom with us. So it was always my mom that was the full authority. And when I would ask my mom, could I do something? And she would say no. And then I would say why? And then I would fuss and I would be upset, stomp my feet, close my bedroom door and said, because the conversation was over when she said, because I told you so. <laughs> there was nothing that got under my nerves more when she said, I told you so, because she didn't want to negotiate. God's word isn't looking for loopholes. God's word has no loopholes and he's no shadow of turning. So he's not going to tell you he told you so, and then he's going to go around and let somebody else do the exact same thing. It's not. His word is no shadow of turning. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he told the Israelites this yesterday, and if they experience that in their relationship with God, then he's telling us this today, those who name the name of the Lord. I want to make that clear. The same God is yesterday, the same God is today, and the same God is the future. So if he said it then, he still means it today. So don't think that somebody has an edge because they're younger and they have a more understanding of God. No, nope, it's the same God. No shadow of turning. Come with me. A little review. I'm going to go to the book of Ezekiel. And I was reading this. And I want to connect with you the differences that people have and how God relates to them. 
okay? They're going to come from one perspective. You're going to come from someplace else. But I want you to show you what God thinks about that. We're going to talk about two things today. One, Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 17. Listen, I'm going to read it slow. You read the whole thing. He says, yet your countrymen say, no, let me go to verse 16. None of the sins he has committed will be remembered against him. If he has done what is right and right, he will surely live. If you do right, you will live. That's what the Bible says. Verse 17, watch this. Yet your countrymen say, the way of the Lord is not just, but it is their way not that is not just. So let me read that again. Your countrymen say, people say, the way of the Lord is not just. I can't be a Christian because he makes it too hard. I can't be a believer because you all don't have no fun. I can't believe in God because there's so many other things to believe in. There's so many other choices. There's so many other religions. What makes us think that your Christian God is the one? Okay? You've heard this. I know you do. The way of the Lord is not just, but it is their way that is not just. It's their confused mind that is not the truth. It's their ability to think that they have options. It's the beginning that they fell for the lie. It's the thought that they can't be controlled. That's what the problem is. The heart can't be controlled. It won't accept boundaries because Adam and Eve broke those boundaries that God had told them, don't eat of that fruit. Those boundaries was broken. They can't obey. They can't do it. We can't. So when we think God's not being just, God's not being fair, it's actually us that won't back that thing up and turn our hearts around and obey him. So we have to blame somebody. So it must be God's injustice. It must be God's unfairness. It must be God's strictness. It must be his word that won't let me do what I want to do. We won't see that. We'll just see that we're not treated right. We're not treated fair. We as Christians have to obey the living God or we suffer consequences. I just want to do what my friend's doing. <laughs> I just want to fit someplace. Read this. Verse 18. If a righteous man turns from his righteousness and does evil, he will die for it. Have you ever read this before? Has anyone ever said this to you before? Because as believers, you have to understand what God just said. Is there safe ground? Do you have it all together? Have you dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's and at the last minute you flip the switch and you go back into the world and you get caught up in something? Watch this. If a righteous man turns from his righteousness and does evil, he will die for it. Are we talking about backsliders? Are we talking about going back and actually getting even with somebody and maybe taking their life? getting retribution from them, taking revenge, and thinking that nothing's going to happen? Watch this. And if a wicked man turns away from his wickedness and does what is right and just, he will live by doing so. See why repeats the gospel. There's only two sides to this gospel. There's those who believe and living continuously and then there's those who won't believe and get finally saved, get a chance to come into the kingdom. I'm going to say this again. It's those who do believe and live continuously believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and living in his truth and keeping his commandments. And then there are those who don't believe, who finally do hear the gospel and receive Christ. They get a chance to come in and people say, that man, that they'll never change. That's who they are. Hey, they're, they're going to they're gonna burn. You know, that's what you think. But if they come to Christ and they ask him for forgiveness, if they take him into their heart, if the Holy Spirit unctions them and said, this is your dying breath, like the man on the cross, this is your dying breath. And he says, I recognize who you are, Jesus. And Jesus says, today you will be with me in the kingdom. That scripture just became alive put it together. That man at the cross with Jesus, one recognized him, the wicked did not. The other one recognized him and he got saved while he was hanging there. While he was breathing his last breath, he recognized who Jesus was. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. The Bible, Old Testament just affirmed what actually happened. I'm going to read that again. And if a wicked man, person, human being, 
turns away from his wickedness while he is there at death door, walking down that aisle to be ex executed. I don't know if not everybody gets that chance. Whatever that breath is at death's door. And it says, and does what is right and just, and that what is right is confess Christ, what is just and not as your sins. And he will, they will live by doing so. There we go. You will live. You will live in the kingdom of heaven. You will live in paradise. You will live in peace with God. Don't cut it that close, beloved. Don't cut it that close. Listen. He says, O house of Israel, I'm, speak, I'm going to speak to the church too. O house of Israel, you say, the way of the Lord is not just, but I will judge each of you according to his own ways. There you go. There's people who are saying, God, why did you bless them and not me? There's people thinking that they got something over on somebody else. There's people are saying, you don't even deserve the money, you senior citizens. You got enough money. We scammers are going to come and get it because you don't even know what to do with it. You don't have no grandchildren to give it to. We need to come and get it. Those scammers are in the world trying to find a way to get from you what they think they deserve. Oh, my God. Listen. He says, the way of the Lord is not just. People say, why are you giving it to them and not to us? Why does God treat you this way and not us? Listen, he said, but I will judge each of you according to his own ways. There you go. Whatever you do with it, whatever God gave you, and whatever I did with mine, whatever God gave me, he is just. He sees us across the board. Scripture say, God looks upon the heart. Man looks upon the outward side, but God looks upon the heart. So don't think they're getting away with something because they lived good with what they had and you lived in poverty. He's going to, what did you do with your poverty? Did you run around and steal from everybody's in their camp? <laughs> did you take from everybody or did you help them with the little bit you had? And you that had something, did you think that they, you ain't giving them nothing or you were so prideful? They say, God, get bless me. I'm good. I ain't giving nobody nothing. We will all be judged before the judgment seat of Christ for the deeds done in the body, whether they be good or evil. I just confirmed that scripture. Okay. Consider yourself up to speed. We are moving on with the image. If you have an image that's going this way and you feel like you can treat people like that, but the image in your mind, you can go that way because you feel that nobody else cares about those people and you feel like people that have something and you're jealous and you're coveting it and then you're going to create a scam to get it from them, that's evil and you will die in your sin. Beloved, come with me. Here we go. Ezekiel. 34, verse 16. Now we're talking to the leadership. This is going to be a challenge. Stay with me. Keep good notes. Leave me some comments because now we're going to go for the throat, as they say. Here we go. Listen. With their mouths in Ezekiel 33, we're still in the book of Ezekiel, verse uh, 31. My people come to you, the Bible says, as they usually do, and sit before you to listen to your words. Okay. That sounds right. But they do not put them into practice. I'm going uh, 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 to take a deep breath, and I hope you will too. But I'm going to read that again just to make sure you heard what I heard. With, he says, my people come to you, you know who you are, as they usually do, and sit before you to listen to your words. But they do not put them into practice. That's what it says. It says, with their mouths, they express devotion, but their hearts are greedy for unjust gain. Oh, Lord, what year is this book? What year is it? Go? What year are we in? What are we talking about, God? Did, did the word just locate you and me? Are we just hearing this for the first time ever? That what we are experiencing today's fellowship is actually true, that it has been this way for quite a long time. He said it to that generation and he says it today, right now. Listen, my people come to you as they usually do and they sit before you to listen to your words, but they do not. We do not put into practice. With their mouth, they express devotion. You've seen it, but their hearts are greedy for unjust gain. Images, mm -mm -mm. idols. He says, indeed, 
To them, you are nothing more than one who sings love songs with a beautiful voice and plays instruments well, for they hear your words, but do not put them into practice. There you go. Why? He says, because of what? Greedy for unjust gain. Idols. Idolatry. They're going after something that isn't God. They're making the pretend that they want it. They are, they are looking the part like they can handle it. But down inside, the part that God can see is not after him, but after greed and unjust gain. Beloved, this is going to rock your world, what you're hearing right now. I hope it rocks you to wake you up, stand on your feet. The scripture says, awake, awake, crowd loud, cry loud and spare not. Here we go. Listen. When all of this comes true, and it surely will, then they will know what the prophet has been among them. God's saying it. I see you. I hear what you're doing. I know what you're doing. But the way you're saying it and what the message people are getting, they're not practicing it. There's something else going on. So the next chapter, we're going to read verse 30, uh, chapter 34. He says, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. I'm going to say his modern church, the people who are in his fellowship. He says, prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, 2022. Woe to the shepherds who only take care of themselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with wool and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. You have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally, so they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. Things in this world that will take Christians who are disappointed with God, who blame everything on God, who are persuaded that it's God's fault, this, that, and the other thing is what happened to them. They are blaming him for this, that, and the other thing, and they won't take accountability for the people that they worshiped. They will not look at the people who have brought them to that place of thinking. They will not accept that mankind is fallen and that the likelihood of us making a mistake is daily. Lord have mercy. He says, my sheep wandered all over the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth and no one searched to look for them. Go on. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, because my flock lacks a shepherd and has been plundered and has become food for all the wild animals. And because my shepherds did not search for my flock, but cared for themselves rather than for my flock. Therefore, the sovereign Lord heard the word. This is what the Lord says. I am against the shepherds and will hold them accountable for my flock. I will remove them from tending the flock so that the shepherds can no longer feed themselves. I will rescue my flock from their mouths and it will no longer be food for them. Beloved images, images, cultural identity where people have put their trust. They put their money. They put their ideas. They put their ideals. They put their blood, sweat, and tears behind men, leaders. And all those leaders did is reap from them, take from them, buy big things from them, buy equipment from them, buy ideas from them, buy their books, buy their songs, buy their scenarios, buy their testimonies, listen to their, 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 their conversations. But their hearts, people's hearts have not changed. Look at our cities. Look at our backgrounds, how we have. Look at how many traditions of men are all. Look how religious this country has become. But beloved, who is walking for Christ? Who is standing for the Lord? Who is not reaching for worldly gain? 
who hasn't heard some shepherd say, do it this way and you will be this way. Get it here because I'm giving it out to you and you can come up here and be like me, be loved. I'm Evangelist Charlotte Lumpkins. We are talking about graven images. We are talking about people who follow other people. We are talking about people who have images in their mind's eye. Their imagination says, I got to worship that man. I got to worship that teacher. I got to worship that person. I got to worship what they say. And in their heart, they have hidden idols that God can see that are leading them down the wrong path. Beloved, stay with me. We're talking about the challenging things about graven images. In the name of Jesus, come back. Let's finish this topic. See you again.